want to come to you tonight. I want to praise you and thank you, Lord. I pray that you open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us and to be able to apply what we learned tonight in our lives. And we pray this in your name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. This week, we're going to talk about something kind of, kind of heavy, okay? It's something that we all deal with, but it's something that I want to make sure y'all are equipped to handle. And we're going to be talking about rejection, all right? We all deal with rejection. So, I want everyone to participate in this. I want everyone to hold up your right hand with five fingers up. Everyone hold up your hand with five fingers up. Jake, I know you're homeschooled, but this is five. <laughs> all right, y'all ready? So, yeah, all right, hold on. Just left, right. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. Put her finger down if you've ever been left on red. All right, most of us are down to four. Those of us that don't have a phone are still up to five. All right. Girls, you bet. It, I hope none of y'all put your fingers down for this, because if you do, I'm talking to every one of your parents. Put your finger down if you've ever asked someone out and they said no. All right. Some of us, some of you kids, I'm talking to parents. I see your hands down. I'm kidding. All right. Put your finger down if you've ever gotten an F on a paper or a test. All y'all who didn't put your fingers down a line, y'all better put a finger down. All right. All right. So some of us went from five to two. All right. These have been some pretty trivial questions. I'm about to ask a couple of serious ones. Let's make it serious. All right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Put your finger down if someone has said that they don't like or cannot stand you. Okay. All right, here's another one. Here's another one. Put your finger down if someone has said that they don't want to be friends with you anymore. Hold on. No, everyone keep your hands up. I want you to look around. Most of us went from five to either zero or one or two or three. We got one dude over here who's lying. He's got four fingers up. We're going to pray for him after service. <laughs> but I want you guys to think about this in your head. Don't answer me out loud. You can put your hands down. I want you to think about this in your head. Don't answer me out loud. Think about it. How did we're going to take the last two? Someone telling you that they don't like you or don't want to be your friend. How did that make you feel? Don't answer me. How did it make you feel? The second question I want to ask is, what did you do about it? How did you handle it? What we're going to do in this series is we're going to equip you on how to biblically deal with rejection, anxiety, and stress. So what we're going to do, as opposed to me coming up with some witty stories to get you guys, you know, riled up, I want to jump straight into Scripture because this is really important. This is an important tool for you guys to have in your toolbox. So we're going to jump straight to the Bible because when people reject you, I want you guys to know that Jesus never will. And we're going to learn how to rely on this and, and apply this to our lives. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 6. We're actually going to be reading verses 1 through 12. We're going to break it down, but this story is very important. Mark is in the New Testament. It's the second book, Matthew, Mark. Matthew, Mark. So it's the second book in the New Testament, chapter 6. I'm reading out of the NASB, so this may sound a little different than what you have. But we're going to dive right into it. It says, Jesus went out from there and came to his hometown. I want you all to, there's an asterisk by that for a reason. It, he came to his where? His where? One more time, all of you. He came to his where? This is very important. And his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and there were many listeners that were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things, and what is, his, and what is this wisdom given to him? And such miracles as these performed by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, 
and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. And he could do no miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief and he was going around the villages teaching. This is very important, you guys, because what we see here is that we are not alone. We aren't the only ones that are rejected that will be rejected a lot of us realize that jesus was rejected and that's why he was put on the cross and he died for our sins but he dealt with this in life all throughout his ministry so when you're rejected by someone you're not alone jesus was rejected the same way that we are and who rejected him what does it say here his hometown. He was rejected by the people closest to him. The people that saw him, grow, saw him born. That watched him grow up. They knew his family. It even says among his relatives. One of Jesus' brothers did not believe that he was the Messiah through his ministry. Now, how would you react if the people closest to you rejected you, like your mom and dad, or your closest friends, your brothers and sisters, think of how you would honestly react right now. Don't tell me. Think about it. Got it in your mind? Let's see. How did Jesus react? He announced his observation and his feelings to the people that rejected him and those around him, but he moved on. To tell if you're following him, we need to put into perspective how we handle rejection and how Jesus handled rejection and see how it compares. Because it continues in Mark verses 7 through 12. It says, and he summoned the 12 and began to send them out in pairs. I want you all to say in pairs with me. He began to, began to send them out in pairs. That's very important. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey except a mere staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals. And he told them not to put on two shirts as well. He says, you know, it says in red, he added, do not put on two tunics. A tunic is a shirt. It's not a turnip or a spice. It is a shirt. So, and he said to him, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. He's given them specific instructions, right? Any place that does not receive you or listen to you as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. And it says they went out and preached that men should repent. Now, this passage has a lot of meat on the bone. And we're going to dive into this in our small groups. But he sent his disciples out knowing that they were going to be rejected. That's why he told them that if they do not receive you, to do what? Shake the dust off the soles of your feet. That sounds weird, right? Because a lot of times when we shake stuff off our feet now, it's not dust. It's like dry skin and stuff. Some of y'all need some of them petty eggs. Y'all remember those? Like a cheese grater you put on the bottom of your foot. Start sparks in the house. Anyways. That's just my mom. I'm kidding. So, in those days, unlike today, hospitality was very important. Okay? When a stranger came into your town, you were culturally obligated to take care of that person. Take them in, give them food, water, give them a place to sleep. Okay? That was culturally accepted. If you did not do that, a lot of times it meant you were a pagan community. So, what we see here is that if they rejected the disciples, it showed that they did not want to care for people, which is antithetical to what God calls us to do. Now, we're going to talk about shaking off the dust. I was going to put on here, shake it off, but I didn't want anyone here singing that devil woman Taylor Swift at youth group. So, but check it out. 
shaking the dust off the soles of your feet had a big, it had a significant cultural significance back then, all right? So, a lot of people, when they take this passage, they take it as you completely cut people off and you don't care about them anymore. That's not what it's about. It's not a symbol to hate people. It was a symbol of judgment. So, usually what happened is the pious Jews, like the Pharisees and the religious Jews, when they were leaving a Gentile city, what they would do was they would shake the dirt off of their shoes as to not bring the Gentile dirt home with them on the sacred ground of their Jewish city. So y'all can see why it's a big, significant thing back there. So it was to show that they had a separation from Gentile and a lot of times pagan practices. If the disciples shook their shoes off in a Jewish city, so they were shaking Jewish dirt off of their in the Jewish city, it was showing that they had rejected God and God was passing judgment on them. Because y'all got to remember, back in those days, it was different than it is these days. Those cultural importances were a matter of life and death a lot of times. It was showing that that city rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Right? So, today, that is culturally equivalent to, I wash my hands of this. What I mean is they did as they were instructed to by God. When they were rejected, they washed their hands of the situation because they had no more responsibility. They did what God told them to do. The people chose to either accept or reject it. If they rejected it, they washed their hands of the situation and let, and let God do what he do. This is one way that we deal with rejection, you guys is we do the right thing. We respond in the correct manner. We still show love in that situation. And what the people do about it, that's on them. It is not your fault or your responsibility of how they react. It's a hard thing to learn, but what we have to do is wash our hands of the situation. We still love them and pray for them, but it's not our responsibility anymore. What it does when we do that, it helps us to build a hedge of protection around ourselves by allowing us to rely on Jesus and to let go of that rejection. Because what we're doing is we are affirming that Jesus is the anchor from where we get our acceptance, our encouragement, and love. And not from other people. It's, showing, it's allowing us to show that Jesus is the base that we belong to. Now you guys, this is where it's going to get a little tough. And I want you guys to be honest with yourselves. Adult, y'all too. Y'all heard me say a hedge of protection, right? A hedge is not a wall. Our hedge of protection is relying on Jesus and him protecting us from being overtaken by fear and anxiety. Y'all listen to me. It is him protecting us from being overtaken by fear and anxiety. When we build walls... It is our attempt to hide us from fear and anxiety. What happens a lot of times is we build a wall. And we, when we build that wall to hide us from anxiety and fear, what it does is it separates us from other people. And it separates us from being able to communicate with God because it's something that we do. We are trying to rely on ourselves and our own defenses as opposed to relying on Jesus. Fear and rejection can feel like something dangerous is chasing you. That's the best way I can describe it. I don't know if you guys have been truly fearful of anything, but fearing or having anxiety or stress about something can feel like something dangerous is chasing you. And giving into that feeling is a strategy of protection. As opposed to a strategy of divine connection. Being able to connect with God to get through it. So what we end up doing is we hide and then we don't seek. We begin to hide what we're going through from others. And then what you get is you get fear and anxiety turning into loneliness and depression and hopelessness. Because you've cut yourself off. We tend to build walls to protect us from feeling 
more pain, but what we do is separate ourselves from God. And when we build those walls, a lot of times what we do is we wall in that fear and that anxiety. We build walls trying to escape it when in reality we trap it in there with us. Living behind those defense mechanisms keeps us from growing and experiencing that connection that we need from God and the connection that God gives us with others. But y'all, we are not alone. What, we, what you see after that story happens is you see Jesus' disciples coming back. And they, they come back to Jesus and they talk about their rejections and what went on. And what you see is that Jesus never rejected them. Y'all look at Judas. Judas is the one that betrayed Jesus and had him hung on the cross. Now, there's debate whether Judas took part of the Last Supper, but if you read all the stories about Judas, he was sitting at the table eating with them before Jesus called him out. Jesus didn't reject them. Jesus knew what he was going to do. But guess what? Jesus let him eat at the table with him still. If he's not going to reject Judas, he's not going to reject you. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, this is what we see. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, not building a wall, not holding it inside, not trying to fight it on your own, but casting it on him. We're going to talk about how you cast it on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Be sober-minded and be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to, to devour. Now, that's not saying that the devil's going to come out the ground and eat you, but he's going to send people and situations your way to try to get you into fear, anxiety, and depression. He's going to have that person come to you and say, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I don't like the fact that you go to church. I think what you believe makes you a bigot and you're a hateful person and try to make you feel some type of way. The, devil's going, the devil may come and have your family turn against you. This is what it means by that he rules around looking for who he, for who he may devour. Resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And if you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called to you his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Y'all, God is our security. Jesus is the secure base we are sent from. And we are sent to share the good news. And we're not sent alone. Y'all remember when it said that he sent his disciples out in pairs? Y'all, if y'all look around you, y'all have a community of people around you right here to bring your burdens to. When it talks about bringing your burdens and putting your burdens on Christ, it's, of course, talking about prayer, but it's talking about not having those walls built up and being able to talk to the people around you to have them pray for you. Because you may be sitting beside someone that has gone through something that you have not gone through and they can help you through it in a godly manner. We have a single firm foundation in which we can receive love, encouragement, and protection. And that is Jesus. So I'm going to ask you again. When you face those times of rejection in your life, how do you react? As opposed to how should we react. If you don't see it matching. It's perfectly okay. That's why we are here. You may not know how to react to rejection and stress. But turn into the Bible. We can see how to do it. I want to do something different with you guys real quick. If you guys would. I want you all to stand and close your eyes for a second. Stand and close your eyes. We're going to play, we're going to play a song. I want you to close your eyes. Don't think about the person next to you. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I, I want you guys to think. 
You can take it up a little bit, Tech D. Take it up. Take the song up. I want you guys to think. If you've gone through a time of rejection and you've struggled, you're struggling right now, and you want to give it to God, I'm just going to open up while this song is playing for you to come and pray at, at the stage. I'm not going to make a big spectacle out of it. I'm not going to call everyone up here to lay hands and pray for you. If you want to come give something to God, y'all can come up to the stage and give it to him. If y'all are going, if y'all gone through rejection and you're struggling with it, come give it to him. If you see that you've handled rejection the wrong way and you want to be able to give it to God and you don't know how, come up here and we'll pray for you. Like I said, I'm not going to make a big spectacle out of it, but if you got something that you want to give to them, give it to them while the song is going. And afterwards, we'll pray out and go to our small group.